Hi, and welcome again to Tech It Out. Up until now, if you wanted a laptop with a touchscreen, you really only had one of two choices. One was to go out and buy a laptop with a touchscreen already built in, or the other was to add on a separate monitor with touchscreen capabilities. And these can range from the pretty terrible, really, to the incredibly expensive. But most of them come in at around about 150 to 350 pound mark. Still quite expensive to just add a touchscreen. And some, well, they were just unbelievably expensive. But today something arrived that I think will help with this. And indeed, if you have a laptop without a touchscreen, or a MacBook, which don't actually come with touchscreens at all, this could be the answer to your problems. So we're going to get it open now and have a look what's in the box. And then we'll go through the setup procedure and have a look at how it actually works. Let's get this box open. It's very well taped together. Try not to cut myself as I do it. Get this box open. And as you can see, it's quite full of packing. So we get the packing paper out. And once we've done that, we are left with this long, narrow box. And this is the item that actually does the transformation. It's called an air bar. So if we just get the big box out of the way completely, And as you can see, touch when you need it. it this is the 15.6 inch version to match my laptop. So if I just grab my laptop, bring it across. And then we'll go through the unpacking and the setup and see how it works in real life. There are separate versions of this for different sizes. This one's the 15.6 inch version for my screen. And as you can see, it's play and touch, plug and play, whichever. Uh, touch using any object, your hands, whether you've got gloves on or even using a paintbrush. It has an enhanced user experience, pinch, sweep, zoom, and so on, and compatible with both Chrome OS and Windows 8.1 and Windows 10, uh, although it doesn't say that on the box. You can get the MacBook version of this separate. It's a completely different version. It works exactly the same way. Of course, we've got the little instruction booklet, so that goes in the drawer of obscurity. And let's actually get the item out itself. And once it's out of the box, we can turn the box over. And it shows you on the back how you attach it. Just put the bar underneath the screen, plug the USB in, and away you go. And there are the various sizes that you can buy. Let's have a look at the bar itself then. All in all, it's a very simple piece of kit. On the back here, you've got two little tabs and two little magnets. Then on the front, you've got, let's just get this bit of cardboard off, two little lines for lining it up on the screen and the USB lead for plugging it in, and that's it. What you can't see very well in the video, there is a very, very thin window there, which the laser, which is how this works, shines through, and the receptor is actually hidden behind there as well. So now we've got that all unpacked, let's see how it works with the laptop itself. Now I had to go out for a while, so I packed it all back up, so let's just unpack it again. And as you can see, it matches up with the screen, and you have the two little tabs there. If I take one of them off, you can see the little metal plate on the back there, which clips onto the magnet on the bar. 
So if I just take the covering off, there's a bit of sticky pad underneath. Now I leave them on the bar to fit them so that they actually fit in the right place. Line the bar up with those two little marks that I showed you earlier and try to get it as level as possible with the bottom of the screen before pushing it down flat and then just press the two ends in where the tabs are to get them well and truly stuck. And then you can just detach the bar. The magnets pull off quite easily. And then just give those tabs a press just to make sure they're firmly stuck. And then every time you want to put the bar back on, you just simply clip it back on by the magnets. Plug the USB in and it loads up the drivers. Nothing to actually do yourself. You don't have to download anything. You just plug it in and away you go. The trackpad is still working. But now I can actually use my finger as well on the screen. Let's open up the music app. And as you can see, I can scroll up and down quite fluidly and right to left. That's pretty good as well. And then close the app. Now, I'm not sure if that was to do with the bar itself. I have that problem with my tablet as well. I have difficulty for some reason closing up. So we open up the web browser and as you can see, it opens up the keyboard at the same time, the on-screen keyboard. So if you want to use that, but of course you've got your main keyboard. Got some games here. You see it opens up the games. So that's all working. It seems to be working quite fluidly and quite quickly, actually, um, surprisingly so. Very little lag. Still having problems swiping away the screen. What else can we have a look at? We can have a look at a, a let's have a look at a bit of news. You have to give it a, a quite a firm press, although it's not pressure activated. It has to register your finger on the screen. I'm not going to look at Trump. We'll have a look at this. A nice story. I can't seem to get any pinch to zoom working at the moment. And again, I'm having problems swiping that screen away. Again, as I said, that might be Windows 10 and not the bar itself. I do have the same problem with my tablet. Let's go, um, let's go back into that game. Let's play a little game and see how the game plays. Free cell. Now it's laid out the cards and it hasn't dealt me a very good hand looking at it. So um, I think we're gonna have to move some cards out of the way to actually get started. And again, I'm not putting much pressure on the screen. It's not pressure sensitive, as I said. It's all done by those lasers. They track where your finger is quite accurately. So let's close that. Let's see if I can close it. No. Clo ah, no, there's a problem. I just barely touched that and it dropped off. Yes, if you just lightly tap it, I think the magnets could be a little bit stronger than they are. They're not quite strong enough. And if you do happen to touch it with a, a shearing motion, it just knocks it down and knocks it off the magnets. Let's go into paint and have a look. See how accurate it is when you actually do a bit of painting. Now that's strange because I touched it with my finger there and it actually did multi-touch. Anyway, let's draw a little smiley face. Give him some hair. My artistry is fantastic. This is a, a tablet pen that I've got. One side's a normal pen and the other side's for using on the tablet and that seems to be working quite well. Ah, no, maybe not. It does say there is a minimum width and it may not be quite wide enough 
to register with the lasers. Let's try a brush then. Quite a big brush this, but yep, yeah, that's working as it said it would. Now, I'm not sure what artistic style that is. So let's just close this out of the way. This top corner's not responding very well. But that may be because I'm standing to the side and trying to press it. And, ah, uh, yes, <laughs> the closed box had come up. No one done, nothing was happening. So that all seems to be working, although there are a few small difficulties. The, as I said, the pinch to zoom and and the fact that you can knock it off quite easily because the magnet's quite weak. But going back into the normal mode of Windows, as you can see, a, a long press on the screen brings up the context window. And if we now go into, say, Word, we can see how it works in that. Brings up the screen quite well. So, again, you can bring up the keypad, on-screen keypad, if you want to, but of course there's no real need for using that. Again, you can scroll quite easily, very responsive, and touching the top does bring down the control bar now. And it closes quite quickly. So there you go, air bar. Conclusion then, well, the magnets are a little bit weak, they could be a bit stronger, because if you do happen to touch it, it does tend to knock it off. Apart from that, there's not really much that is wrong with it. It seems to be an excellent idea, and if you want to use your laptop, which has come as a normal laptop without a touchscreen, as a fully-fledged touchscreen laptop, well, you can't go far wrong with the airbar. It seems to be the ideal solution. It's small, light, easy to store and transport, easy to apply and set up. In fact, it has no setting up. You just stick it on, plug it in, and away you go. So yes, I highly recommend this. I think it's an excellent idea and a solution to a problem that has bugged many people, both laptop owner, Windows, and Mac. Now, I haven't got a Mac to show you how it works on the Mac, but the makers of Airbar actually produced a video, so I'm going to Play that now, so you can have a look at that. For me for now though, again, thank you for watching. This is your MacBook Air. And yeah, it doesn't have a touch screen. Oh, how boring. But now there's Airbar. Just plug it in and you have touch. Finally, you can swipe away unwanted mess or find a needle in a haystack. Wait, is that a poodle? Cool, now you're the poodle. Scroll away. The sky is the limit. Just go bananas! Or, I don't know, maybe you just want to eat a banana. Anyway, if you want touch in your MacBook Air, get Airbar.